Hi friends, it's Dina with Forever Free with EFT. And this video is going to be connected to the Musar trait of patience. Um, I've talked about in some of my other videos, I'm going through a pretty long and in-depth study of different Musar traits. And if you don't know what Musar is, the best way that I can explain it is um, kind of a Hebrew look at different character traits that we see in scripture. So going to those roots, what do those words mean in the original language in which scripture was written to us and how do we walk those out in our daily life? And so patience, I always thought was basically not being impatient. So kind of more like having the ability to wait with grace. But what I learned was that patience is really more about bearing burdens and bearing the burden of others and bearing it with that grace and calm and peace. And I don't know about you, but sometimes that's extremely difficult to, for me to do. And when I was really reflecting and doing the work and meditating on this patience that I needed to have in my own life, I really had to take a look at my parenting. Now, I had wanted to be a parent since as long as I could remember, but I really struggle in the area of bearing the burden, the weight, the complexity and difficulty of parenting my children because my children are not super easy. It's not a cakewalk for me. It's not something that apparently just came naturally and it was fun and no big deal and I just say things and they respond and we're all good. That's not what it looks like in my family and maybe that's not what it looks like in yours. And so I wanted to do a personal tap um, for the triggers and emotions and just the heavy weight that I felt around my lack of patience in my parenting. And hopefully it will help you out too. Um, and if it doesn't, that's okay, but maybe it will. Or, or maybe you know someone that really needs um, to see this video. And so I hope that you will share that with them. Um, now, just reminding us we're supposed to rate ourselves when we're in those impatient moments and we feel maybe ragey against our kids. That's my um, struggle that I just eventually will yell and explode all over them, um, even when it's not warranted, which is most cases, it's not warranted. And so there are definitely those 10 moments in my life. Um, not every day, but definitely they were, it's much better now that I've practiced this trait, but I would say it was definitely like a once a week um, explosion, sometimes more, just depending on, you know, where life was and where life had me. So even though I struggle having patience with my children and I often yell and explode at them. I love and accept myself and I know that the Father will help me to grow in this area of loving my children better and having more peace and calm. Even though I lack the peace and calm often in my parenting and so I yell at my children because I just want whatever it is to stop right then and there and I don't take the time um, to slow down and think through things and talk to them in a calm way that they would respond to better. Um, I accept myself and I am working to create a better and safe environment for myself and my children. Even though I struggle greatly at times with patience bearing the burden in parenting and I resort to yelling and screaming, I'm going to forgive myself and love myself and accept the journey that the Father has refining me to be the best parent that I can be for my children. Oh, I have an itch. Really bad. So I have always wanted to be a mom for as long as I could remember. Definitely since my high school years. I remember in <clears throat> the home economics type class that we had and you go through the different discussions about families and marriage. And since then, I dreamed, I had it planned out. Married at 23, first kid at 25, 
and then more children after that with, of course, my Prince Charming, um, who was out there somewhere and I just had to find him. Um, I believed in God at that time, but I wasn't walking truly in his ways. And so I didn't know how it was all gonna happen, but I guess I thought I'm just gonna make it happen. I'm gonna do the things and I'm gonna find my guy and we're gonna get married and we're gonna start our family. And so in college, I did meet a person and we did get married. I think I got married at 23, somewhere around there, 24, but things did not go well. And that first marriage tanked completely. Um, the father did give me the insight not to have children in that marriage, but man was I so struck by grief at not having them, but I wanted them desperately. And so as that marriage ended fairly peacefully for me, um, the dream and the fire and the passion remained alive inside to find the right person and to be a mom because part of me had kind of said in my mind that if I didn't find him by the time I was 40, I was gonna adopt children on my own because I wanted them so bad. I wanted to be a mom. I wanted to love something outside of myself in the way that I had been loved my whole life by my parents. I grew up feeling loved and knowing love and affection, but I did grow up being yelled at a whole heck of a lot. And I know that my parents did the best that they could with what they knew and what they had and where they were in life. Uh, but they didn't have an intimate relationship with the father either um, in my growing up journey. And so maybe they just mirrored what they grew up with um, yelling. And so I mirrored it too. I started, I finally found the guy, the father brought him to me. That's a whole other story and it was miraculous. And we quickly started our family and it was felt like a miracle. It felt like a miracle to be pregnant and carry children and to birth them and to look at them and ooze with that love that we have when we see our children and to cuddle them and love them and nurture them and grow them into little people. And then they became little people who learned how to say no, who learned how to lie and disobey um, and you think, you know, I'm going to do it different. I'm not going to do everything that my parents did. And maybe we think I'm not going to make the mistakes that they did. Um, I'm going to be wiser and I'm not going to yell the way that they yelled and how impatient they seemed. And then you find yourself in those moments where you just don't know what to do and you don't know what to say. And this little being in front of you is not responding and not obeying. And so you yell and it gets their attention and it maybe gets obedience in that moment, but it starts this ugly cycle of yelling for control. I think that's what it stems from. I think it's wanting control over something that feels out of control that the enemy convinces us that we don't have control over, that he lies and tells us that we don't know what we're doing and we're doing it wrong. And we've messed things up. And who do we think we are? We're nobody. We're insufficient parents. And so that just snowballed over time and there were moments of remorse and regret and reading books and trying different techniques and trying to keep it together and trying to keep my cool, but things cycle around and I'm back to the yelling and it's not who I want to be. It's not how I want to parent. It's not 
oh, it's so not the voice that I want my children to have inside their head of me. It's not the memory that I want them to look back on their childhood and say, my mom just yelled. She just couldn't keep her cool. She couldn't bear with us. She didn't know what to do. And so she just yelled and exploded all over us. That is not the memory that I want. That's not the environment I want in my home for my children who I love and I cherish and I utterly adore. And so I find myself here in this place of needing to confess that I didn't bear the burden, that I lacked the patience, that I believed the lie. And I got caught up of the deception, in the deception of the enemy. And I let him keep me trapped in that ugly cycle of impatience and not bearing and not um, finding ways of peace and cooperation that scripture talks about to us. Um, that we need to love more. We need to have more mercy and grace. We need to find the way to be long suffering like our father slow to anger, to bridle our tongue. That's our, one of our biggest weapons in our mouth and the words that we spew out of it. To do that, to take those deep breaths and say, you know, I need a minute. I need a minute to come back to this situation where maybe we all need a minute. Maybe we all need to take space and come back and talk about this. And we all need to agree to take deep breaths and not be angry and disruptive and yelling and ugly and say things that we're gonna regret. And so I need to bear that burden and I commit to bearing that burden before my Father in heaven because he is faithful to help me. He is faithful to reach out to me and to show me and to guide me when I completely lose my cool, and he is the Yah, the Father, creator of second chances, and he forgives me always when I come to him. If I have a repentant heart, he will forgive me, and he will make things right, and he will make things new, and I am trusting that he will restore the memories of my children, and he will take away those moments of yelling and rage and ugliness from their memories. And he will replace it with the good, with the love, with the kindness, with the helpfulness, with the cuddles, with the I'm sorry's, with the do overs, with the second chances, because he says that he will, he can redeem all things. And I believe him and I'm going to trust that he will redeem the relationships with my children this day even that I can go and I can apologize and I can have that conversation we can go to those places we can repair what feels irreparable sometimes but with yeah it's not with our father nothing is never too far gone too far beyond his fixing his fixing not my fixing his fixing so I will choose his paths of peace for myself, for my children, for my family. I will quit. Well, I can say I will quit. I will try my best to not walk in my own understanding, but to accept his help, his love, his Ruach that lives within me to guide me and give me that wisdom and discernment in those moments when I need it most. And I'm grateful. So I'm gonna walk in his ways and accept his peace for me and my family as he grows that patience within me and within them in the future that we have together. He's amazing friends. He can do all that he says he will do. We just have to allow him. We have to get out of his way we have to be in his word and on our knees in repentance and in prayer. So practice it, try it out, and see if you find yourself forever free.